I'd like to begin by telling you a story now that I'm back from this holiday. And the story ties into a news theme and a political issue that we have talked about many times on this show. And I think at some point you might get a gist or a sense of where I'm going with this. So here's the story. It was, gosh, was it just yesterday? (laughs) It was yesterday. When you fly long distances and there's all sorts of moving parts to a trip, you come you sometimes come to lose sight of what day it is and where you are. You're sort of like out of your own body. I think I'm mostly unjet lagged at this point, pretty sure. But yesterday, we flew back, Adam and I, from Europe to the United States, and our final leg of this very lengthy journey was from Dublin, Ireland. And we got to the airport in Dublin plenty early because we had heard you need a lot of time. I said, okay. So we get there. It's probably, what, mid-morning. And you get to an airport, and it's a pretty normal deal, standard. If you're used to airports in the United States, there's not that much different about what we did. You go and you check in. You've got your boarding passes, and you've got all your luggage, and you wheel over to security. And we waited in quite a long line to get to security, where they put you into new lines, then you get into, you know, the little area where you're putting all of your earthly belongings, basically, into these little trays and shuttling them down a conveyor belt into the x-ray machine or whatever they're going to call it. And you've got your electronics that you've taken out, right? If it's larger than a phone, that has to come out. And if you've got liquids, they have to be a certain size, and they like you to put them in a little Ziploc bag and take them out and all of it. And we had a real stickler in our lane. This older gentleman was, like, interrogating every person and micromanaging the whole process. And I was just trying to not be rude or some sort of, you know, American tourist. So I was very polite. I want to say, yeah, I know the drill, sir. Thank you. Fine. All the luggage goes through. Adam got a secondary screening with some swabbing of his belongings and his hands for, I guess, bomb residue or something. So that was an extra delay. So we finally get through security. Now, typically at that point, what do you do? You take your luggage, you take your traveling companions, and you walk down to your gate, you cool your heels, maybe get a drink, maybe get a bite to eat until it's time to board. Not so in this case. Because there are so many travelers who go from Ireland to America... They've decided to set up basically U.S. Customs and Border Patrol and Border Control on the Irish side of the equation. So normally if you're flying internationally, you come back home, you get off the plane, you get herded into a separate little area of the airport where you have to go through all of the immigration stuff, which is the hint of where I'm going with this. But in Ireland, I guess the traffic is so heavy to the United States that the U.S. government has set up their own security system on the Irish side, so when you fly back to the U.S., you don't have to go through all of it there. Interesting. I've only seen this once before, I think, but I guess that's the system they have in Ireland. So we didn't know this. So we get to the U.S. security line. You have to do it all over again. You wait in the long line going, you know, back and forth in the little, you know, little... What do they even call those things? Like the tape that they have where you're just winding your way up to the extremely exciting moment where you can get checked all over again. So that took a long time. We get, and here it comes, out comes the laptop. Right out come the liquids. In this case, because it's the U.S., you have to take your shoes off this time. Through the conveyor belt, they go for yet another scan. I guess the Irish one wasn't good enough. We need an America one, too. Then you get to the other side. Fine. Are you done yet? No, you are not. You get in another line. I mean, this is now well over an hour. You get into another line, which is the U.S. Border Patrol, the U.S. Border Control screening system. And you wait your turn, and you stand there with your passport and your boarding pass, and finally when they call you, you come up, you hand over these documents, 
They check your documents. They make sure that your papers are all in order. They ask you a few questions. They're checking your photograph. Is this you? How long were you here? Where are you headed? All that stuff. And then finally, when they're satisfied, the officer says, okay, you're free to go. And then you head to your gate. So this was a lengthy ordeal. I don't tell you this whole story just to whine about travel annoyances. I'll do that later in the show, actually. <laughs> so that's there's a tease. Now, the point to all of this is after going through all of those steps and coming through the Customs and Border Patrol checkpoint, the first thing that you see on the wall, they have an American flag, they have an Irish flag in this case, and then hanging right there are the smiling official portraits of President Joe Biden and Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Sort of like, ah, welcome through the American system. We're the ones in charge. You're welcome. Now, I understand if you are abroad and you're coming back to the United States, it would be derelict not to have any system in place to make sure that people getting on airplanes destined for the United States have been screened somewhat thoroughly. I have no problem with that. I've gone through it many times. It has never bothered me before. This one bothered me. And you can probably guess why. After going through all of this stuff, I'm looking at these two politicians, the president and his DHS secretary, disgraceful. And I, as a United States citizen, had just had to subject myself to all of this stuff. Which, again, under normal circumstances, I'd generally be fine with or at least resign myself. This is sort of, you know, part of the deal. But then you juxtapose that experience, a law-abiding U.S. citizen with a U.S. passport, a natural-born citizen with every right to be in the United States, simply trying to come back legally to my own country. I had to go through all of that stuff, and it took seemingly forever. And by the way, if I had decided, you know what, I don't, I don't feel like this today. I don't want to do this. I just want to be in America. I don't care what these people say. I'm just going to, like, bull rush the CBP checkpoint. I'm going to try to run right past them and refuse to comply. What would have happened to me? Would I have been detained? Would I have been likely charged? Yes. Because these are the rules. These are the laws. The United States is a sovereign country. Even if you live there, you have to abide by our immigration standards, practices, and laws. That is the social contract. That is the agreement that we've made. And yet, at the southern border in this country, you have thousands of people simply walking into the country every day. And you have thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, 50 to 60,000, in fact, every month, walking into the country and not getting stopped. And they are allowed, in many cases, to stay here. In fact, it is really hard under the new rules, under this administration, to deport them if they're found, if, they're, if you can even look for them. And if they've committed the crime of entering the country illegally, that is not a deportable offense. Even if they have been convicted of subsequent crimes of a whole array of categories, they are not eligible for deportation. There's like a welcome mat. If you don't abide by our laws, if you come into this country unlawfully, welcome. We might process you. We might not have the resources or manpower to catch you. But you'll be... In all likelihood, there's a very good likelihood that you will be able to stay. People flying in who are foreigners to the United States have to be vaccinated. Come through the southern border, not the case. Some of these rules are scrupulously enforced. Right? The U.S. immigration laws are scrupulously enforced or were against me. A U.S. citizen just coming back from my vacation. 
But if you are an illegal immigrant coming from all over the world, by the way, to Mexico, to the southern border, there is a very good likelihood, a very good chance based on the data and based on the policies and based on the incentives that if you just walk across the border undetected or detected and they can't catch you, or you turn yourself in and get processed, you're going to be able to stay, and it'll be very hard to ever remove you. And you know what? Even as a non-hardcore border hawk, that really bothers me. That pisses me off. The border and immigration laws of the United States of America either matter or they don't. And what we're hearing from the powers that be, the elites running the country right now, is that the laws actually do matter a lot for some people, like U.S. citizens in this case, but they matter a hell of a lot less for illegal immigrants. What on earth are we doing? Again, if I tried to rush through the security line and refuse the screening from CBP, I would have been tackled, handcuffed, detained, interrogated, and probably charged. I guess my mistake would have been not just coming to the southern border. Oh, what just like what an absolute disgrace. And I think it was what set me off on all of this was seeing the photos of Biden and Mayorkas right there greeting me, having gone through this whole annoying hassle the right way. And those are the exact people who are directly responsible for the border crisis that they don't even acknowledge exists. They say the border is secure. They say the border is closed. People worried about it. Just shut up. You're probably a little racist. 3.4 million encounters under this president alone. Millions. We're almost at a million known gotaways under this president alone. This crisis is raging down there. They're allowing it to happen. They are causing it to happen deliberately. And then here are the rest of us, a bunch of idiots... Just doing the right thing and obeying the law. And that's just a tiny microcosm, by the way. What I went through was like an hour and a half of inconvenience. Imagine being someone who wants to legally immigrate to this country and you've done everything the right way. What a chump you must feel like to go through this week after month after year in some cases to try to get all the paperwork correct and go through correctly and go through all of these you know, hearings and all of that to get the piece of paper that the government is basically making a total mockery of down at the border every day. It is grossly unfair. It is deeply unserious. Either our immigration laws matter or they don't. And it feels right now like they matter for people who are law abiding and they don't for those who aren't. What kind of a message, what kind of a policy, what kind of a country is that? The Guy Benson Show. Just getting started back from vacation. Glad to be here in the USA. Stay tuned. 